How's it going? It's going well. How's your, uh, how you doing on this gorgeous Saturday morning? I'm in my basement. Because oh. I, I, you know what? There's something's going on and something's going around. I've had this snorkel in my nose and uh, I didn't want to infect the rest of you with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just being a nice guy, you know, <laughs> seriously. Well, listen, uh, welcome to Dave's Corner Garage on a gorgeous Saturday morning. It's Steve Scheiman here with uh, Alan there. And uh, we're going to do a, a great show today for you because they're always good. This one's a little special. We're going to be uh, live with Brian Max, who's at the Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Uh, with some great racing going on all day today. Uh, later on, we're going to have Jeff Atkinson on from the Honda Indy. So uh, there, this city is, like, exploding with stuff going on. So why don't we go uh, camera 42? Let's go out live to uh, Motorsport Park, and here's Brian Max. As we hope. Is he there? <laughs> you just got to love live radio. Brian, are you there, man? We're not hearing you yet. Okay. Technical difficulties are probably uh, temporary, but we'll get them on soon. So, Al, why don't you run down uh, some of the stuff we're going to be doing for today? Yeah, we're going to be talking to Jeff Atkinson about the Toronto Indy. I don't know. Well, Steve, you live down close by the lake. Have you have you seen construction? Because you know they do it all on the on the in the exhibition grounds. Can you see it from your apartment? Uh, condo. Ec- <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, yeah, from where we are, we're, I drove in this morning along the lakeshore, and they're uh-huh. just just now starting to set up. Uh, there are trucks everywhere, but they don't start the road closures until probably the middle of next week. And Jeff will talk more about that, but there are some, there's, it's, it's a busy city, and there are people listening from all over the place. Some great car shows going on this weekend. Um, and speaking of, uh, of interviews, we have an interview later on this hour with a, a gentleman who's going to be riding in the Indy uh, next weekend, Roman Grosjean, I believe is how his name is pronounced. He'll be in, and uh, of course, we'll be announcing the winner of the uh, Triangle Tire Contest, where somebody, it could be you, it could be you, has won a full set of Triangle Tires and a $250 SO gift card. Al, we noticed that some of your family wrote in. To register? No, no, no. I, I, I think they, they, they realize that. Uh, well, they'd have a problem with some of those. Some of my family would have a problem with skill testing questions. So, they, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they nice figure guy. There's no point in trying. Nice you know, guy. Seriously. But uh, there are but, some. Yeah, there's a street festival going on on on, on Lawrence Avenue, and uh, some amazing stuff. What else are you going to say? Go ahead. Yeah, no, just about Roman Grosjean. You know, he's a pretty famous guy. You know, yeah. he drove Formula One for nine seasons, eh? And now he's driving in the Indy Series. And uh, um, and also, we got to take our hats off again to Brian's team. You know, Thane Performance, who's racing this weekend, of course. You know, he r- drives the, uh, well, not him. Um, <laughs> Michael DeMeo drives his AMG. Hopefully he doesn't hit anything. And, and they did get it fixed. Actually, Brian, are you there? I'm here. So did you get the bodywork fixed? And is it all painted or is it full of duct tape? <laughs> well, that that's a race team owner's secret, isn't it? Uh, okay, well, as long as you got the same color green to paint the duct tape, it really, you know, I we don't we don't want to give any, you know, advantage to the other drivers, the other teams, right? No, we we definitely don't. Now we uh, we replaced the whole nose of the car, uh, put our signature dark green uh, metallic vinyl over top. We had to repair uh, the fenders that may have a little bondo in it but then uh it's been wrapped again with our dark green metallic well now that you've got your battery plugged into your car and you can talk in your microphone we're going to get you to to stand still for like maybe a minute all right and we're going to come back with brian max who is live at the canadian tire canadian tire motorsport park for a great race all day today qualifying starting pretty soon some interviews coming up And, of course, a conversation with Jeff Atkinson all about this year's Toronto Honda Indy. It's going to be a great weekend. It's summertime in the city, and we are thrilled that you are with us on Canada's number one consumer automotive radio show. This is Dave's Corner Garage. We're back right after this. Stay with us. Automotive blogs, breaking news on the biz, and some groovy of it. Hot time, summer in the city. It's going to be a nice one. Finally got a really, really nice weekend that you can actually breathe, and it's pretty good. So let me bring in uh, Brian Max, who's going to be at the uh, the racetrack today, and along with him, the guy who's uh, on Mr. We're going to call you. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing at myself. We're going to call you Mr. Sepical today. Uh, here's oh, Thank you. Thank you. There you go, Al. All yours, buddy. 
That's your cue to right. talk. <laughs> Such a dweeb. Such a dweeb. Hey, listen, Bryce. Somebody's uh, somebody's written in on our uh, on our Facebook page this morning. How do you get out to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park? Uh, so it is. Uh, it's about uh, 15 minutes north of uh, Bowmanville. So take the 401 East to get to uh, Bowmanville Road, I think it's called, and uh, go north on Bowmanville Road to Concession 10, and uh, you can't miss the place. So uh, tickets, if you don't have tickets already, they are available at the gate. There's lots of racing going on today, and the the big show with the prototypes. Um, that big race is tomorrow afternoon. So lots to see, and you know it's more than just racing. There's a there's uh, a midway. There's uh, all kinds of things for for kids to do. Um, there are food trucks, uh, and then of course, our our paddocks are very open and welcoming. So, for example, you know, fans are coming up to our paddock area, and they get to meet the drivers. They get autographs, and it's 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 a lot more accessible than other forms of motorsport. Yeah, it's a big thing that NASCAR was always you know always hyped the fact that. You know, when when the pit lanes are open for the public, they can actually get up pretty close. And and if you can catch a driver and talk to them, you know, they 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 encourage the guys too because they you know the more that the fans can get involved and see up close, the the more interesting it is, and they're going to want to come back. Well, that's exactly it. And IMSA is really good with it. That is that is our uh, I guess our, our championship our overall yeah. championship. And for every uh, every event before the race. <sighs> Fans um, can come into pit lane. They call it the the, the grid uh, fan walk, and Ooh. fans can come right up to the cars in pit lane, meet the drivers, check out the cars up close, and of course we we are giving away all kinds of swag. We've got stickers and hero cards, and our drivers will be there signing autographs. Al, you realize that he's become a big star here. You know, you know that, right? I know. I realize that. And so. we may have to get him a like a but, special chair. But hang chair. on. But but he, you know. I, I was watching some video from last week or for the from his June race in Detroit and they couldn't stop talking about this newcomer, this newbie who actually gets on the podium to finish. Like that was amazing. Yeah, it really was. And yeah, uh, it, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I, I was gonna say uh, so I'm a I'm actually a fan of our championship. I don't really follow much racing, but I follow our own championship and I've been a fan for years. And because I'm a fan, I know that teams don't just casually debut and perform so well. Um, so for for us, it's a testament to our team. And, and my partner and I were, were able to put together a really good group of people. And okay, so listen, we've got some uh, a great interview coming up as he takes a walk through the paddock. Look, he's shaking hands with everybody. He is a star. Stogies and the whole thing. We have an interview coming up next with a gentleman who's going to be driving next week at the Toronto Honda Indy, Roman Grosjean. That is coming up next right here on Dave's Corner Garage. Plus, we'll be announcing the winner of the Triangle Tire Contest before this hour is out. So stay with us, grab a coffee, and enjoy the day. Want to see how photogenic we are? Check out our favorite pics and videos by... Welcome back to Dave's Corner Garage. I'm Brian Max, and joining us on the line is one of the very fast drivers you're going to see at the upcoming Honda Indy, July 14, 15, and 16, and it's Rome Grosjean, who drives for Andretti Autosport. Roman, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, my pleasure. So you've uh, you've raced the Toronto circuit once before, and uh, that uh, it, it's a different kind of circuit. And and in context of of your very long career, what do you what do you think about the the Honda Indy circuit? I like it. I think it's it's a very challenging racetrack, like every street course, uh, especially in IndyCar. You know, you've got pedestrian crossing at bus stop. You got traffic during the year, and then we got Indy cars coming and, and driving it. And uh, it's it's a hundred percent difficult to create a, a racetrack in a city. But uh, Toronto is an exciting one. It's a tough one. And there's uh, there's few bumps, there's few different tarmacs, but um, I think Andretti has spot us out a great kind of pass. And I'm excited to come back. I'm excited to come back racing in Canada. It's been such a such a highlight in my Formula One career going to Montreal. And now, now we do Toronto and IndyCar, so very happy to come. And, and Toronto's Toronto's got a little different vibe than uh, than Montreal, but uh, the Honda Indy does a, a great job for the fans as well. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but um, on the Friday they call it Fan Friday, and it's open, no no ticket required. Yeah, that's great. I think uh, you know more fans we have, better better it is for the show. So it's very exciting to to know that Friday it's it's all good. It's also really nice to know that 
every kid under 12 years old has got free admission. Uh, I love seeing kids around the race track. That's what I, I did when I was a kid. And, and that's what gave me passion about racing cars. So, you know, I hope, uh, I hope we can give that uh, book to some of them. The the race is coming up, uh, in case anybody doesn't know, it's July 14, 15, and 16. And for us in Toronto, that's the middle of the summer, where it's not only hot, but extremely humid. And of course, in IndyCar these days, you're racing with the aero screen. Uh, aero screen. So how, how do you deal with uh, heat like that in a, in a long race? I live in Florida, so I get used to it. I guess. <laughs> now, are you driving? Are you driving your race car in Florida? Uh, no, really driving a race car. Well, I went cycling uh, a few days ago, and the real feel it was 114 degrees Fahrenheit. So, I'll tell you one thing: it's it's hot and humid, and it's difficult, and it's challenging. And Toronto is going to be tough mentally, physically for the cars. But I love it. I love having a really tough, hard race, and then you finish it, and you you enjoy a nice burger, and there's no shame about it because you've burned all the calories beforehand. That's, that's so true and, and that's one of the things i did want to ask you about because you've you've raced uh a, a lot and you've got a, a long career in, in formula one and indycar is is different um not only in terms of technology and the hardware uh but also in terms of of culture i, I think our, our listeners would love to know what you think going from indy going from formula one to indycar yeah, it's been a bit of a change, but, you know, it says four wheels and the steering wheels, so I guess that's the, the principle stays the same. Um, I had to learn a lot on, on ovals because that's very different from everything I've done before. Uh, the racetrack are also very different, much more bumpy, much more much more challenging in a way. Um, the cars technologically, yeah, they, they're far, far, far behind, but it doesn't really matter as everyone's got the same car and everyone's got the same chance to win the race, and that's really all matters to me. And it's uh you know it's it's a it's a different thing uh, in IndyCar of course with with the ovals, and you know it um, I can't imagine going from Formula One where you've never done that sort of thing to having to learn a completely different driving technique and also of course how to set up the the car differently. How did that process go for you? Yeah, it, it's like road cycling and mountain biking. It's the same thing, but it's very different. And uh, that's so I felt. So initially I was completely lost and eventually got better and better and understanding what I needed from the car and, and, and what was good and what was bad and, and how things were going. Uh, I still think I can learn quite a bit. And, and you know, I've only done like five ovals, six ovals in, in my entire career, maybe five. So it's not that many, uh, but I'm excited to uh, to do some more. I'm excited to keep learning about it. Um, my favorite part stays the road course because uh, you know you turn left and right and you break and I love the braking part uh, but definitely enjoy enjoy a lot of the ovals you're driving with Andretti Autosport a very formidable uh, experienced team but also comes with that big name and I, I'd like to think that you have the benefit of advice coming from Michael and Mario yeah, absolutely. It's amazing to have Michael and Mario at every race and, and be next to them and chat with them about the past and their experience. And I think Michael's won more in the Toronto race than anyone else. So he knows one or two things about it, and I'll make sure that I'll ask him before the race. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I you know I was there for for many of those uh, those races, and it's very exciting. I think um, uh, certainly Michael is is a fan favorite and. Everybody knows Mario. When I when I spoke to him the first time, of course, I called him Mr. Andretti, and he corrected me, Brian, please call me Mario. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's an amazing. <laughs> now that you're in IndyCar and driving a completely different set of circuits, what are some of your favorites in this part of the world? Uh, there's a lot of them that I really like. St. Pete is home, Road America, Long Beach, uh, Indy 500, of course, and uh, Laguna Seca. I remember playing that racetrack when I was a kid on, on PlayStation 1, I think. So that's a, that's a long time ago. <laughs> it's, it, sure, it sure is. And in fact, I think that's how I learned Laguna Seca was was virtually before I ever drove there. And that's, that's one of the advantages you have as a driver today is that you can spend some time on the simulator and, and learn these places. But I do have to say, Road America, I've, I've uh, raced there a couple of times and driven there several times. It is a very fast circuit. I can't imagine how fast it is for you down that back straight. Yeah, it's great. It's fast. It's flowing. It's uh, up and down. It's very big. So it's it's absolutely one of my favorite in the U.S. And even worldwide, it's top five. Here in Toronto at the Honda Indy, that that back straight is, is uh, fairly long. And uh, uh, you're going pretty fast before you get to that braking zone. 
Absolutely. And it's very bumpy. There's, there's one racing line that you want to use, avoid the bumps. And uh, for a street course, it's challenging, but it's good. And then you've got a big breaking at the end. So in the race, there's some passing opportunities, uh, which is absolutely awesome for a street course. What's great for the fans in Toronto is that it's it's central here in the city. And it's, you know, you're right in the middle of the, the action. You're right in the middle of the city. So I think it's not only do fans get to enjoy uh, the racing that's going on, but they can also be part of everything else that's going around, on around in the city uh, while the, the race is on. Yeah, absolutely. That's key in street course, you know, is making sure that you get to a place where everyone can come and everyone can have access and and it's just an easy place to go. So uh, that's a really good thing in, in Toronto. And uh, I, I know our listeners would want me to ask, what do you think of Canadian fans? Uh, the French-speaking one of the best ones. But the English speaking one are very good too. <laughs> uh, yeah, quite genuinely, um, it was it was ten years ago this year. I was in Monaco for the Grand Prix, and I was a guest of uh, of Red Bull. And you were coming from pit lane over to the the, the the team buildings, and you were on a you were a man on a mission and just body checked me out of the way. <laughs> okay, may have done that. Uh, may, it was a tough weekend. I should have. I should probably have won the race. As far as fans go. What what do you think they should expect uh, for the for the race? Like every IndyCar race, expect the unexpected. Uh, you never know who's going to win, and that's the beauty of it. Yeah, and there are, I mean, there are so many drivers that have so much experience and and teams as well that it it's an incredibly competitive championship, and that and that's I think that's what makes IndyCar really attractive. Absolutely, very competitive. A lot of drivers can win the race, and. Uh, yeah, you, you never know. So hopefully I'll win Toronto and uh, many more. Well, we we definitely hope to see you on the podium and that would be excellent. You'll have to say some words in French, in French if you do that. Absolutely. Oh, easy. Easy peasy. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm sure. I'm, yeah, it just looks easy from the outside, Roman. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good race. I'm excited to come and uh, hopefully we can, as I said, we can uh, play uh, play a good one in the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much for joining us uh, and and chatting with us today. And uh, we'll see you at the race. See you at the race. You take care. Roman, thanks again for joining us. We're definitely looking forward to seeing you on the track. Be safe and best of luck. You're listening to Dave's Corner Garage. We'll be right back after the break. Dave's Corner Garage. And stay tuned because uh, we're going to be announcing the winner of this month's, actually last month's, July already, uh, June's contest where we're going to be giving away a full set of tires from Triangle and a $250 ESO gift card. We just want to thank everybody. This was the biggest entries we've not, ever had. Uh, thousands of people have, have entered this thing. So uh, we want to thank you. If you didn't win, we've got something else coming up. All right, Gelman, over to you. Alan. Yeah, bro. Brian, just a question. And in your own series, for the most part, all your teams are individual teams, you know, backed by private individuals. But in the WeatherTech series, do you have a lot of factory back cars as well? Yeah, that's especially in the prototypes. They yes. are definitely factory back. So in WeatherTech, they have uh, the GTD uh, category, which is uh-huh. kind of semi semi factory. Right. So you're gonna hear our you're gonna hear a race car move. Uh, it's, uh, where they're saying it. But it's going somewhere. I think uh, someone yeah. stole your muffler. Uh, well, we don't really have mufflers. <laughs> Such <laughs> so, a yeah, rookie. Twin turbo V8 and that thing. <laughs> and uh, you know, speaking speaking of a race car, I actually have uh, our Canadian driver Michael DeMeo on the line with us. Michael, you're finally back at Canadian Tower Motorsport Park in uh, this fun little AMG GT4. We've got mm-hmm. qualifying coming up. How do you think qualifying is going to go? Um, I'm pretty confident going into qualifying after we set up the car for it and you know everyone's in the right mentality to go out there and and do the best we can um i know this place better than any other track so once i get into a groove and get comfortable with the car um we're gonna be fighting for the pull and this is your home track lots of friends and family here How, do, how does it feel to be racing in front of friends and family? It feels good. And we're also racing in front of probably a couple hundred campers surrounding the track. So, <laughs> Well, there's tens of thousands yeah, of people here this weekend. Uh, it's a really good turnout and just happy to be back racing on home turf. Awesome, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. 
Brian, are you limited to what tires you can use, like how many sets or different brands, or you have to stick with one only? Well, our championship is called the Michelin Pilot Challenge, so you can guess which tires we use. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, so we are we are limited to five sets of uh, slick tires per weekend. We can buy as many rain, uh, sets of rains or wet tires as we need, but um, we, we do have a limit, and, uh, and you know, that's one of the things that, that the team has to approach strategically. Now, question, but do you, are there different compounds, and they, do they tell you which ones you need to use? Uh, so we're not quite as sophisticated as uh, as you know Formula One might be or IndyCar. We have right. one compound, and that's all we can use. Okay, that makes sense. Um, because a lot of times, you know, when you're watching the Formula One, especially when it goes from rain to dry or vice versa, you know, when someone that chooses to change tires could, you know, take five seconds at at or take off five seconds to his lap time, eh? Oh, easy. And, you know, that that's in our our championship is so competitive that that's really where races uh, can be lost. You, you're not going to win in pit lane, but you can certainly lose it in pit lane. So that's one of the things we work on as a team is practicing our pit stops. And there's you know, we've got more than enough time to handle a full tire change and a driver change in a fuel stop window because the fuel takes the longest. So if we get all the basics right, then, then we've got a, a decent uh, a decently quick pit stop and can get back out racing. Brian, so listen, say- somebody, somebody's written in here right now. Sorry, I just want to jump in for a sec. Somebody yeah. wrote in. Uh, Brian, what's the, what's the breakout today? Like, what's the plan? When is the qualifying and how often is it done? And when does the actual race take place today at uh, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park? So our qualifying is uh, is coming up. I'll be heading up to pit lane shortly. So our qualifying um, is at 11.10 this morning. And our race is at 4. Uh, I mentioned earlier we do the, the, the fan grid walk. That's the, they open pit lane at 3, so all the fans can come in and see the cars up close. But our race uh, starts at 4. And then we run till 6 p.m. Hopefully, uh, uh, fingers crossed, we do well. And then uh, tomorrow there are a couple more races as well, including the big uh, WeatherTech race. I think that's uh, probably just after lunch tomorrow, and that's with the big prototypes. They're incredibly fast and incredibly high tech. So, in fact, Brian, if you you win today, you're going to be like, you know, uh, you may not even wake up tomorrow. Uh, if if we if we win today, uh, fingers crossed, um, I won't be waking <laughs> up until about Tuesday. <laughs> well, well, congratulations. Uh, I, I, you know, let's. Your, your driver seems to have the right attitude. You know, he's it's a home track for him. He really wants to perform. Um, and who's your other driver? Uh, so our other driver is Mark Miller. He's actually based in Michigan. So coincidentally, um, I'm based in, in Toronto, of course. My partner is based in the Detroit area. So we have a Toronto area driver and a Michigan driver. Uh, which is which is just uh, incredibly funny, but they they both work very very well together, and they're both very very fast. Now, what other tracks does the series run at, other than you know, of course Detroit? You went on the road course, and now you're at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Where where else are you going next? Well, uh, next we we are we're going to take a little bit of a break and, and uh-huh. plan for 2024. But our next race will be at Indianapolis on the on the road course, and um, we'll also race at uh, Road Atlanta in uh, in October. But this championship, it's the premier uh, sports car championship in uh, in North America. So we race at all the big tracks like Daytona, Sebring, obviously here at uh, Mosport, Laguna Seca in California. Um, so we get to all the big the big well-known racetracks now question it's called the chevrolet grand prix um now and, it, and it's sponsored of course by uh, by weathertech uh, what kind of chevys do, do they drive and why do they sponsor it uh well you know they there are several several chevrolets um in various uh in various categories racing uh-huh. this weekend so in the weathertech championship the factory corvette uh is racing in what they what they call um GTD or GTD Pro, and that is with you know Porsches and Aston Martins, that sort of thing. So uh, that is a factory effort from um, Corvette Racing, and mm-hmm. uh, the, the, that car is is gorgeous. It looks good. It sounds good. And our championship, there is a, a Camaro running as well. Uh, but in in WeatherTech, uh, all kinds of all kinds of extremely well known performance brands are competing. Of course, like Porsche, BMW. Um, uh, of course, our cars are there, the Mercedes 
these AMG GD3 uh, is there. And then uh, there are uh, Cadillac prototypes as well, which are, uh, they're my favorite prototypes to watch because they, they sound cool, they're incredibly fast. And the coolest thing about these latest prototypes is that they're hybrids and they do run partially on battery. So when they leave pit lane, mm-hmm. they are totally on electric. So, okay, Brian, well, what uh, kind of... Steve's what, got a question. Go ahead, Steve. I have a question. Thanks, Dad. Um, what kind of speeds do these guys get up to in the straightaway? Uh, so, on the on the back straight, our car... I haven't looked at the data yet, but our car is probably topping 280 kilometers an hour. But wow. the prototypes are... Yeah, the prototypes are going to be well over 300 before the end of the back straight. Hang on. How many miles an hour is that? 300 kilometers? It's more yeah, than your kilometers is uh, 180 miles an hour. Oh my God, I didn't realize. I hope there's. Uh, I hope Schmitty's not there with a radar gun. Uh, well, you know who's coming today? Our friend PC Sean Shapiro. Of course he is. <laughs> Does he ever sleep? Yeah, his. He, I don't think so. No, I think he's going to be probably out there going. I could do that. Uh, would they ever do? <laughs> do these circuits ever do motorcycle racing? Yes, uh, they do have motorcycle racing here at uh, Canadian Circuit Motorsport Park. But, that would be Yeah, fun. that's about the, you know, um, uh, Sean Shapiro would definitely not fit in our race car. And if he did get in, we would never get him out. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you're talking about changing drivers during a gas stop, a pit stop. Does that not take, like, minutes? And, and, and normally you want to do a pit stop in about 10 seconds or less. How do you do that? So our pit stops are defined by the, um, the amount of fuel we're putting in. So, uh-huh. for example, if the if we need to put in, you know, whatever it is in terms of liters, that might take 50 seconds, for example. However, a uh, driver change only takes us 22 seconds. Wow! But it, is it, I mean, the, does the guy? But but <laughs> the seat doesn't move, right? Okay, it's it's in a fixed position, and and yes. and I'm guessing the the liner is what changes how he's sitting. So does he have to get out of the car? take off his communication device, uh, disconnect, take his water bottle off, and his seat liner all in 20 seconds? Uh, Almost. So in our car, uh, Mercedes AMG does a very good job in terms of driver protection, as you'd expect from from Mercedes Benz. So our seat is actually fixed in the car. It doesn't move. And thankfully, our drivers use the same insert. But what does move is the steering column and the pedal box. So when we go from driver to driver, each driver will set the steering wheel and the pedals to where they want them. Oh, okay. So they could do that. And they could do that on the fly, really, if they had to. Yeah, you can you can do it while you're while you're actually driving the car. But again, because the pit stop takes so long, it's much longer than the driver change. They can actually adjust the pedals and the steering wheel while they're sitting in pit lane. All right, all right, super. We're gonna have to go from one track to the other. Steve, take it away. All right, listen, we're gonna be talking next with the big races coming up next weekend here in the Big Smoke. We're gonna be talking to Jeff Atkinson all about next weekend's Toronto Honda Indy, which is going to be one of the best they've ever put on for you to go see. So stay with us. This is Dave's Corner Garage on a beautiful weekend here in Toronto. Thanks for listening. We'll be back right after this. The mission of LinkedIn is to connect the world's professionals. Welcome back to Dave's Corner Garage. We're going to hand it off to the man who's at home. You no, know, but I didn't recognize you with those beers. <laughs> you know? Get her out of there. Uh, checking out with uh, Alan Gelman, who's got a special guest on the air. Al, take it away. Yes, we've got Jeff Atkinson on the line. we uh, He's the guy in charge of the Honda Indy Weekend. Thank you. It's coming up next weekend, right? Al, I can't Jeff? believe it's here already. You know, July July 14th downtown. And, you know, mm-hmm. to that event for the first time really made, made me a fan. But I bought General Mission when I first attended the event some time ago. And, you know, you get to check out the entire grounds. You get to find that perfect seat you may want to buy in a, a future year. But there's a lot of good General uh, Mission viewing areas. So whether it be at Turn 1... Turn 10, and we have a race platform in Turn 4, and we have a really cool new area this year called the Unibet Finish Line Lounge, and that is a multi-tiered uh, viewing area with a lot of craft beer selection. It's got a great view of a video board, and it's a great place to enjoy the race. That sounds terrific. I know I've been to a couple of NASCAR races, too, and had those special passes, and it's amazing. But when they come by, boy, oh, boy, your ears begin to ring. Uh, do, you, do you sell earplugs there, too, by the way? We do. It, it, it attacks the sense, doesn't it? You know, we do have earplugs. We have safety protection for those who, who would like it. 
Um, but it's really <laughs> just, you know, you connect with the smell, the sounds, and all that. That's what's cool about these events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, the first time I went, uh, the fans around me were just going, just wait till those cars come by, man. You know, you're, it, it moves your belly and you're going to get so excited. Anyway, Steve's got a question. Go ahead, Steve. Jeff, people have been writing in about uh, just sort of a rundown of what's taking place during the, the weekend starting on Friday. Tell us a bit more about what's taking place on Fan Day itself. Yeah, so, so Fan Friday, we kick off on July 14th. As I mentioned, you get in uh, free of charge. We do ask for a voluntary donation uh, in support of Make-A-Wish. It's a great program the Ontario Honda Dealers and Honda Canada put on. So that is our Friday. But on Friday itself, you get to see the IndyCars practice. You get to see uh, the USF Pro Series out there. And that's kind of the, the step or the road to Indy uh, ladder system. You get to see the radicals. You get to see the sports cars. You do get to see everything. And we cap the day off with that race. And a lot of the same on Saturday. Saturday, too, is headline. <laughs> by the ass, IndyCar ass. qualifying with the NTT IndyCar series. But you do get to see races from sports car. You get to see races from radicals, USF Pro. So there are races each of the three days. And what a better way to complete the weekend with our last race of the day on Sunday, the NTT IndyCar series, the actual Honda Indy Toronto itself, uh, where they'll compete on the streets of Toronto just uh, after 1 p.m. on Sunday. Is there uh, people have been sort of the rumor kicking around? Is uh, Tracy may come back for the race? Is he ever uh, he, any hinting that he may come back and watch the race on on, uh, on the weekend? Well, I haven't heard that. I, I, I don't think so. However, never say never in anything we do. Right? You never know. But no, that's that's not something in play for for this year. Um, you know, it, it's a great lineup of 27 really competitive cars and drivers on the grid. And I know uh, they all fiercely compete after this beautiful Waterford Crystal Trophy that we give to the winner via William Ashley. And William Ashley does a great job designing and, and uh, curating that trophy for us. So it's a very competitive lineup of drivers and cars on the Sunday. So when does the uh, – now these races are all going to be shown on television as well? Yeah, a lot of a lot of the races are. So there are, there are streaming options for some of the other series, like Pro right. and Sports Car Championship Canada, the NASCAR Pinty Series we televise on TSN, as well the NTT IndyCar Series race itself. It's going to be on TSN on Sunday, July 16th. Uh, they also have, uh, I think, viewing options for both practice, qualifying, and the other IndyCar session on their TSN Plus service. So I encourage those to check that service out uh, should they desire to see those sessions. But at the same time, I mean, you guys have massive screens down there. Eh? I mean, that was the problem with the road course for, for a lot of people is you only get to see, you know, 100 yards of that spot. But but with the big screens you've got there, you can actually view the entire race, correct? Correct. We also have sound horns to connect you live with the play-by-play -play going on. You know, it's really about the immersive experience. We talked about kind of the attack of your senses, but you also have those visuals right in front of you, so you know what's going on throughout the race. And, and that what is what really completes the experience. You get that at-home experience also at the track, but you really get that attack on your senses at the facility. So, Jeff, for people who are listening right now and who are writing in, uh, how do they go about getting tickets? Yeah, tickets are still available, HondaIndy.com. If you're unsure what okay. you want to, to purchase, as I said, Fit Friday is an option with Fan Friday, and General Mission is a great way to get down here on Saturday and Sunday. Well, listen, thanks for taking the time. I know it's, uh, it's you may you may not get any sleep this week coming up, but uh, we're all looking forward to it. The long-range forecast is looking really good. So congratulations once again. Maybe we'll see you down there, and uh, we'll follow up maybe the week afterwards and, and talk about the race. But uh, all the best to everybody who take all the time to put this together, and uh, thanks for joining us. You have a good weekend. Yeah, thanks so much. We'll see you soon. Okay, bud. All right, listen, this is Dave's Corner Garage. We'll be back with Alan and Brian Max shortly. And, of course, we'll be announcing in the next segment the winner of the Triangle Tires and a SO $250 SO gift card, which, going by the prices today, would not hurt to have. Stay with us. This is Dave's Corner Garage with uh, Brian Max and Alan Gelman. We'll be back right after this. They're called Fingers, and they were given to you for a reason. Radio. He's on the radio, doing the last segment. That must be Brian Max. Hey. Okay, we got a chance to announce the winner. I'm going to throw it over to you, Alan. Go ahead. Yeah, as a matter of fact, before the break, you know, Brian and I were talking about different 
tire compounds and if they're limited. Um, and, and he said, you know, um, yes, you have to buy a specific tire and you can't fool around with it. They want everybody to run the same tires at the same time. But those are real expensive tires for sure, eh, Brian? Oh, oh, they're not inexpensive. Our, our Michelins cost us about $2,800 U.S. a set. Oh, wow. Well, I know somebody who's getting a set of tires for way less than that. In fact, he's not paying at all. Uh, he's winning a set of triangle tires, which are super tires. Um, they're going to go on. I don't know what he's driving, but Steve M., who lives in Brampton, as opposed to McQueen, it says, but he's the guy who lives on Rodeo, I think. Uh, nonetheless, Steve M., you want a set of four triangle tires and as well a $250 gift certificate from Esso. So you'll be able to fill up that tank a few times and uh, congratulations on that uh, win. And thanks for joining in. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, the guys, that's Steve. the guy. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a great prize. Yeah. His real name is Steve McQueen. There you go. Oh, it was. Yeah. We think it was Steve M. <laughs> <laughs> I could just see Brian right now going, I could get on Steve McQueen's motorcycle in what was the movie? The Great Escape. Yeah. One of my and classics. It was a triumph, I think, wasn't it? Well, the movie or the actual bike? <laughs> <laughs> the bike was a, no, I think the bike was a, a triumph, as a matter of fact. Could have been. Al, what about you, Brian? What do you think it was? I thought it was the uh, Indian brand. I think he's he's gone away in the pit somewhere. Did we lose him? All right. We may we, have. We may have. We may have just. Maybe he. Uh, he may have just disconnected himself, or somebody in the pits got a little bit too close to him. So it's it's really. Well, a, I, I kind of wonder, bit. you know, because we, you know, years ago we used to go to most part. I was involved in timing and scoring, um, and I'm sure you could probably give a couple jokes with the scoring part of that. But nonetheless, uh, we used to stay over. I'm just wondering. There, there still is camping available at most part. Brian, are you there? No, I think I think he's disappeared. But yeah, there's. I mean, what they were talking about before is the. Uh, I mean, people go there like maybe on a Thursday, try and get right. a camping spot, and they mm -hmm. camp out for the entire weekend. You've got great views of the track. Uh, it's a great yes, way to and spend. The facilities yeah, are. And tremendous. they've improved. They spent tons of money there and improved the facilities. I remember way back when I used to go. There, there used to be outhouses, <laughs> and uh, and and the inebriated fans at the end of the weekend would burn them down. I don't think they do that quite anymore. And and you know this how? Should we get personal here? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, you. Well, didn't. I didn't like the fire, but I just stood back and went, "Holy smoke!" <laughs> so if you were, the if you were, on fire. Okay, nice way of putting it. So if you were there, let's say, what do you figure? Maybe fifteen years ago, it uh, roughly uh, or more. Oh, way more than that. Okay, I'm talking like thirty. All right, so let's just say Brian said typically going down the straightaway, some will do uh -huh. upwards of three hundred kilometers an hour, which is basically in miles. Let's just say it's flat. It's fast. How much? How much less would they be driving twenty years ago when you were there? Like, how much would they be going down the straightaway? You figure. Well, don't forget, I mean, they all had different kinds of driving. I mean, back then there was different kinds of, you know, as we talked here, there's many different series and different types of cars that drive down here. Um, you know, when I was there, actually, they had uh, the Can-Am cars, which were huge V8 turbocharged Porsches and, and McLarens and stuff like that. And they also ran Formula Ones. We The Canadian Grand Prix used to be at what was then called Most Sport, which is now Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. So those cars... I think they would do a lap, you know, in uh, maybe 110, 120, or I, I could be wrong, but but for sure that they were they were upping it, they were getting to 200 miles an hour. Now, of course, if you're in a Formula Ford or a Mini or or my Beetle, I actually got to drive my Beetle on the track. <laughs> you Did you really? That. Oh my God, that'd be yeah. fun. There was a uh, one year when my son uh, Kyle was about seven. Uh, mm -hmm. I went down to my first. Honda Indy, as Jeff was talking about, Fan Day, right. is incredible. So we walked through the pits, and mm -hmm. we got to meet Paul Tracy, who nowadays is still in prime shape. Like, the guy looks like he can still race. And uh, okay. so he took he took me around the track uh, in one of the Corvettes that were down there, and we did 150 <laughs> going down the straightaway. And I went, oh, this is good. I'm turning beyond weight. And then he took my son in the car. And he did about 120 down the straightaway. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the helmet was bigger than, than Kyle's entire body at that point. 
And uh, when he came out of the car, we had to hold him up because the the t- the torque on it, when you're going around each one, is is incredible. Have you ever driven in one of these as a passenger? No, no. But 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 then again, you know, it, it's 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 so true though. There's a difference between being a driver and being a passenger. You know, a, a, of course, as the driver, you is you're in control. I mean, you're you've got the steering wheel in your hands and the brake pedal and gas pedal there. But when you're in the passenger seat, oh my God, it's just such a helpless feeling, eh? It is. It's, but it's it's invigorating. We used to race once in a while, uh, and we know the buddies out of, out of Cayuga are listening to the show right now. But Cayuga mm-hmm. is a great spot. People have. You know, you can do like a like a, a corporate function out there where you can book the track, and uh, the cars are there if you want to use them. And I remember the first time uh, Dave and I went down, and we yeah. uh, we took uh, Darren Boston's down with us, and <laughs> Darren had a Porsche at that point, and we went down the, the straightaway, did a turn, did a couple more turns, and then the car sort of spun around, and I'm sitting in the passenger seat saying, "Why is that car aiming towards us?" And uh, <laughs> and then he ran and worse going the wrong way. And then he ran out of gas, and he had to explain to his wife like I'm going to be a little bit late, but uh, it's it's going to be something else. So listen, we want to thank everybody who's been tuning in, and uh, to the thousands who registered to uh, try and win the, those set of triangle tires. So once again, congratulations to Steve McQueen. Al, get your throat better, and we'll have you. I want to thank. I want to wish Brian uh, good luck. Yeah. Because his team is racing this weekend. Thane Performance, the GT4 with Michael DeMaio. And uh, hopefully they're going to get a podium finish. We we can celebrate next weekend. That'd be nice. And, of course, you can see it on uh, IMSU's uh, racetrack feed and also on Peacock with NBC. So uh, try and catch that later on this afternoon. And if they win it, Brian may be sober by the time he gets back here next Saturday. Uh-huh. But we'll see. <laughs> anyway, listen, be safe, everybody. I'll get better. And uh, everybody have a great, safe weekend. It's summer in the city. Get out there and enjoy it. We're back with you next week at 10 o'clock right here on Dave's Corner Garage.